so these these lecture notes are a little like weird the way they're written i guess kind of if you're not looking at them you'll get confused if you're just hearing them but i will try my best to make it make sense okay so let's start recall that the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body and vice versa and that means contralateral control when the right controls the left body and the left controls the right body that's what it means contralateral control okay now this is a bit of an overstatement as you do see ipsilateral control which is same side so the left controls this the left and the right controls the right. Examples of ipsilateral are taste and smell. Um, and you also have some shared control. So maybe the left and the right control the left body, or the right and the left control some of the left body. I don't even know if saying right and right like this, this is right. right. Okay, right, yeah, okay, anyway. <laughs> So yeah, so that's why she says that it's a bit on, of an overstatement if you just say that, oh, the right controls the left and the left controls I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> okay. Now, if you recall where light falls on the retinas and the connections of the eyes to the hemispheres, you remember why this makes sense. So yeah, so when light hits your retinas, it goes it crosses over here and then here the same thing so it's like yeah <laughs> yeah we call the right hemisphere sees the left side of the world and light from the right visual field strikes the left sides of each of the retinas at the optic chiasm which is here one half of the information crosses over so that in the end, the right hemisphere is receiving left world information from both eyes. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. But the hemispheres certainly talk to one another. The two hemispheres talk to one another primarily via the corpus callosum, and to a lesser extent, the anterior commissure and H A commissure. I'm assuming that means hippocampus or hypothalamus. I think it's hippocampus commissure. Uh, an example knows what the right is up to in 7 to 13 milliseconds. So that's how they talk to each other. The two aren't mirror images. For example, in most people, the left hemisphere is specialized for language. The division of labor is termed lateralization. So that's what lateralization means. The division of labor that both hemispheres accomplish and do. So now we're going to talk about the right hemisphere. <laughs> the right hemisphere is known as the original vice president. <laughs> Although it doesn't control speech or writing, it understands speech and the written word fairly well. It contributes to the emotional content of speech. It gives effect. For example, right hemisphere stroke patients often have to say, I'm very angry, because you can't tell from their vocal tone. It's important for expression and sound, both for production and understanding. Stroke patients often miss humor and irony in speech. The right hemisphere is more adept at recognizing and dealing with complex visual patterns. It's important for spatial processing and visual imagination. Magnocellular cells are important for detection of overall pattern and movement are stronger in the right hemisphere because of magnocellular yeah, like in general, it's very holistic. Um, this is in brackets. Parvocellular cells are important for detailed shape. Uh, and they are stronger in the left. So yeah, so now we're gonna move on to the left 
hemisphere. The left is sequential, analytic, and time-dependent. Example, when listening to music, most can identify tunes better if they're played into the left ear. The right hemisphere hears it. Professional musicians do better if it's played in the right ear. They likely process it differently, more analytically. There are very subtle hemispheric differences you can see in normal people. Eye movements. People tend to look more to the left uh, when putting together jigsaw puzzles due to right hemisphere involvement. Since there are hemispheric dominances at times, there are anatomical differences. Oh wait, that's a question. <laughs> Since there are Since hemispheric dominance at times, are there anatomical differences? Hmm. One area of the left hemisphere, the planum temporal, is larger in 65% of people. The difference is visible to the naked eye and includes areas important for language. It's larger before language develops. Okay. Also, the lateral fissure is 14% larger in the left hemisphere as well. So, the effects of damage to the corpus callosum. That's the subheading. Clearly, damage to the callosum blocks the exchange of information between the hemispheres. Rarely, someone with epilepsy has seizures that cross the hemispheres, and cutting the callosum limits the area of the seizure and lessens the total number of seizures. Individuals in this situation are referred to as split brain patients. Under normal circumstances, these people function fairly well. It's only when information is limited to one side of the body that it's a problem because the information can't cross over to the other side. This is in parentheses. This never happens in the real world. It's a laboratory setup situation. And parentheses. Example for you, for you guys to try. Um, use each hand and draw a C and a U simultaneously. I'm guessing you had some difficulty. A split brain patient can do it with no problem. There's no interference. These individuals have been the focus of a lot of lab studies with some inter interesting results. I will say that most of all of the issues we'll talk about are much more of an issue immediately following surgery, and the other commissioners pick up the slack over time. Suppose something is flashed on the left side of a computer screen, what hemisphere sees it? The right hemisphere sees it. Yeah. Next, the patient is told to reach behind a curtain and choose the item by feeling for it. If they're allowed to use the left hand, no worries. The right, they can't do it. Recall contralateral control so that the right hemisphere controls the left side of the body and the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body. Remember, language is a left hemisphere phenomenon. If a display is flashed to the right visual field, the left hemisphere sees it. The individual can easily name the item. If it's flashed to the left visual field and the right hemisphere sees it, the person can't name or describe it, but can point to it with their left hand and say, I don't know, while pointing to it. Yeah. And obviously that has to do with the fact that the left specializes in language. So yeah. The two hemispheres of a split brain patient can and do function independently. You may also see cooperation at times. 
Example, one patient did better than expected at a task where objects were presented to the left visual field, and he was asked to name them in a yes slash no format. Yes, it was, or no, it wasn't. And the left hemisphere would answer a guess. If the guess was wrong, the right would cause a frown, and the patient would quickly correct himself. Maturation of the callosum occurs over the first five to ten years of life. It's not growing new axons, but rather weeding out unnecessary ones. The neurons connected on either side need to exhibit corresponding function. In one study, a group of three-year-olds and a group of five-year-olds were asked to feel and compare two fabrics, velvet and tweed, and see if they were the same or different using the same hand, sequentially, so one after the other or two hands simultaneously. The five-year-olds could do either, and the three-year-olds made 90% more errors when using two hands. Their calosome wasn't mature enough to allow the info to cross. Then, in brackets, a student of mine tested and confirmed this with her nieces and nephews. It's pretty cool. At times, a child may be born without a callosum. Um, they can survive and be somewhat okay, primarily because their anterior commissure assumes more control. So, the anterior commissure kind of takes over the role of the callosum. Any left-handers? 10% of the population is. Comment down if you're left-handed. <laughs> The hemispheric dominances aren't simply reversed. Example, both have some language control. Okay, okay. The callosum is 11% thicker in left-handed folks, facilitating bilateral function. Explicit memories tend to do better too. They require more hemisphere sharing. So that's really cool, man. I hope y'all learned something. And yeah, please like the video and comment down below what y'all thought was the most interesting thing. Um, and yeah, let me know if y'all would like another lecture reading. I feel like the way she writes um, the lecture notes are very uh, easy to read and follow. And not too textbooky, you know? So, yeah, let me know if this was fun. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I love y'all so much. <laughs>